Hey everyone, welcome back. This is Dan from DHTV and today I'm going to be showing you how to use the iPhone 14, 14 Pro and 14 Pro Max cameras. Let's get started. All right, so we've got the iPhone 14 Pro and we're gonna use this for this example. If you have an iPhone 14, I'm gonna go over some of the features that you won't have while we're doing this tutorial, but most of them are there for you, so it should be fairly similar. Now, the first thing we wanna do to get started is to open up our camera app. And there's a few ways you can do this from your home screen. You can tap on the camera app right there. You can also pull down your control center and there's a camera app there. And even when your phone is locked, you have a camera app that pops up at the bottom left and you can use that one as well. Now, I strongly recommend you watch this entire video because we're gonna go over everything this iPhone camera can do, including the settings, tips, and tricks. But if you do wanna skip ahead, there are chapters in the description so you can skip ahead to exactly what you wanna learn. For us, we're gonna get started with the basics here in the photo section, and we're gonna start by taking a basic photo. So anytime you wanna take a photo with the iPhone, you're gonna use this little button down here and that's called your shutter button. You just give it a quick tap and it takes your photo. Now, as soon as the photo's taken, you'll notice at the bottom left, a preview of the photo will appear. You can tap on that and it'll show you what that photo looks like and you can actually edit, delete it, get information about it, favorite it, and even share it out to your contacts on your iPhone. Now I'm not gonna get into very much of the editing features from this section, but you can watch a video, I have a tutorial, you can look up there at the card or click the link in the description. It'll take you to the tutorial on how to edit photos and videos with your new iPhone. To exit the preview, just tap the back button at the top left. Now when you take a photo, there is a lot of things you can actually do to improve this photo. So first off, tapping on the subject will give you a tap to focus ability. Right now we're focused in on this little duck at the front. We can actually tap on the ducks in the back and it'll focus in on those ducks. If we wanna focus way back on that little duck down there, we tap to focus on that. Additionally, you have some zoom options here. We have a 0.5, which will zoom completely out as far as it can to give you that wide angle. You have your one time zoom, you have your two time zoom, and then you even have your three time zoom, which is going to bring you right in. Additionally, you can pinch to zoom and get even more detail within those photos. Keep in mind, as soon as you go past this three times zoom, you're using a digital zoom, which will degrade the quality. So try to use only these little zooms here if possible. And if you need more, get closer to your subject. So you tap to zoom. Let's say we tap here to focus and we take our photo. So that's how you can get a little bit more customization out of that photo. Now, one thing to keep in mind when you are tapping to focus, so if I tap on that duck or those two in the back, if I move around, the autofocus will kick in and take over. So you can lock the focus and lock the exposure by tapping on what you wanna focus and holding. You'll see AEAF lock, so it's locked the exposure and the focus. Now, if I move the camera around like this, you see nothing happens. It's locked into what I wanna focus on. I can take my photo and to exit the locked focus, just tap anywhere on the screen. Now above our camera app, just to keep in mind this little green icon, that just means our camera is on and in use. So it's a little notifier for yourself. That way if you ever leave the camera on or an app is using your camera, you know that they're using it. Now let's go over some of the other options you can customize before you take your photos as well. So we'll tap this little arrow at the top and it'll bring up all of these extra options that you can use to set up different features and abilities with your camera. To start, we have the flash. So this is pretty self-explanatory. If you wanna use the flash on the back of your iPhone to take a photo, you can turn it on. And when you tap the shutter button, it'll shoot the photo with a flash. By default, it's set to auto. You can have it set to off or on. You'll notice at the top when it is on that this little flash icon becomes yellow. You can always tap to turn it off, so that way it's off, or you can tap on it to set it back to auto. It doesn't have an option up there to set it to on, so just keep in mind you'll have to come back down here to turn it on. The next option is a cool one, and this is called Live Photo, and by default it's set to auto, but basically, what this is going to do when you take a photo, it's gonna record about a second to a second and a half before and after and give you a live photo effect. So to give you this example, I'm just going to throw this duck up in the air while I take my photo. 
Now the preview at the bottom left, it looks like this. If I tap on it, you can see and here a little bit before and a little bit after. Now this example just shows you how it works, but in real life, this is something that can actually help you get a better photo. What I mean is that when you're in the preview and you tap edit, you can actually tap that little live icon there and you can select all those different frames within that live photo. So let's say you had a group photo and someone blinked. You can move this key photo over to where everybody's not blinking, everybody's smiling, and then make it your key photo. And now you get the perfect photo every single time. So live photo is a good feature to have on. Just keep in mind that when you do take live photos, if you plan to share these out with someone, they will be able to also watch those live photos in completion. So make sure that you turn live off when you share. You can see up here, you can turn live off before you share it. That way you don't share something you may not want someone else to see. This next feature is going to show you the different looks that you can set up on your iPhone. And they're preset up here from standard to rich contrast, vibrant, warm, cool. So if you want to use some of these presets, you can, but what you can also do is tap in these little icons here. You can tap tone. You can actually adjust the tone, adjust the warmth. So you can sort of customize them the way you want, but I'm going to leave it on standard for the rest of this video, but it's a good way to have sort of a preset effect on what you're going to take a photo of. The next is the size. You can set up a four by three, a square, a 16 by nine and square is great for Instagram. It's a one by one. 16 by nine gives you that larger look as well, but I'm gonna leave it on the standard four by three for this video. This one here is your exposure. So if you want to play around with your exposure, you can, you can see what it does on screen here. You can go way down and really darken the exposure or all the way to the right and brighten it up quite a bit. And then the last option here is our timer. And if we tap on it, you can see we have a three second and 10 second timer. So we'll tap on three seconds, and this is basically going to allow you to have three seconds before the camera takes the photo. So you have time to run into the photo or get into the photo. Maybe you have this phone leaning up on a tree or on a tripod, and all you have to do is just tap on the shutter. You'll see a little countdown, get in the photo, and then it takes it for you. Now make sure you turn the timer off, otherwise your next shot will also have the timer and you might miss that moment. So you can either tap up here and then tap off, and it'll turn off the option for you. Now all the way to the right here, you can see we have one more and this is live filters. So you're going to be able to see what a filter will look over top of your photo before you take it. So very similar to those other presets, but these are just filters on top. So you can select the one you like and take your photo. And then you got your preview right there with the filter. Great thing is you can turn these filters off in the photos app editor at the same time. And you'll notice this as well appears at the top when it's on. So make sure you turn it off before you take your next photo or set it before you do that. So now that we've gone through all the photo options, there's actually another feature at the bottom right, and that is the front facing camera. So I can click on that. And now you're looking through the front facing camera on the iPhone. You can see me, but keep in mind that this camera is nowhere near as good as the rear facing camera. So try to avoid using this whenever possible, unless you're taking selfies and things like that. But you do have all the same features, very similar. You can tap to get all those options at the bottom. You also can access this front facing camera with the other options like video, portrait mode and stuff like that. So now that we've gone over basic photos, let's swipe to the right. And that brings us to navigation. So you can navigate all the different options just by swiping on screen and you can see them all cinematic video, photo, portrait and panoramic. We're going to work with the portrait mode right now. So we're just swiping one to the left and it works very similar to the photo section. But portrait mode gives you the ability to sort of blur the background. You can see already it's blurred that background. We've got our focus in on these two ducks and it gives you that really cool effect. Now, because we have the iPhone 14 Pro, we have different zooms with our portrait mode. We have one times, two times and three times zoom. You can see how far, how deep we can get into the photo. But keep in mind, the iPhone 14 doesn't have any of these zoom options. You're just going to be on the standard zoom. All right, so let's just uh, zoom in to our two times zoom here. I'm just going to move this duck out of the way. We're going to focus on those two ducks. You have your tap to focus still. You can then use these lighting effects here, which you got natural studio contour stage, stage light mono, and then 
high key light mono. So you can play around with each one of these and whichever one you choose, you can always change it in your editor, but basically you're going to focus in on your subject, just like we have here. We can tap to focus and then we just hit our shutter button and it takes our photo in that portrait mode. Now, when we open our photo, you can see we zoom in, we have a nice clarity on the focus subject and that nice cool blurred background effect. Now you can then even take this a little bit further if you tap up top to bring up your additional options, once again, you have your flash, you have your exposure that you can play with, you have a timer, your filters, but you have this one right here, which is going to allow you to control the lighting effect. So for example, this contour light, you can see we can really bring that in or really bring out the blur there as well. If, if we use this natural, we have this one, which is our f-stop, we can control how blurry the background is going to be, how little the blur will be on our background there. And each one will have its own little option there that you can play around with in these extra options. But that's basically portrait mode and it makes your photos almost look like a professional photographer took them. Next, let's actually take a look at the video section here. And this is gonna work very similar to photos, except you're taking a video. So you'll have the same options to tap. You have your zoom options here. Once again, if you have an iPhone 14, you'll only have the 0.5 and one time zoom. Obviously you can zoom in more as I showed you with pinch to zoom on any phone you want, but the further you go away from the max zoom that your phone has, the more grainy it's going to be. So you wanna to try to stick to your optical zooms that you can just tap rather than zooming in further, which creates digital zoom. So we're on video here. We have the video options at the top right, which is just going to tell you how you're shooting the video. So we have HD at 30 frames per second. We can tap on that. It'll go to 4K at 30 frames per second, or we can tap HD at 60 frames per second, or even 4K at 60, 24, 30 frames per second. So those are the options you have at the top right. Choose whichever one you like. Obviously 4K at 60 frames is gonna use the most space on your phone. I tend to shoot at HD 30 for the most part. And again, you have your extra options. This time you don't see an arrow up there. You can just swipe up. It'll bring those options. You have the flash, you have your exposure, and then you have this option right here, which is a new action camera sort of feature built into these iPhones. So it's sort of going to give you an action mode. So if you have a lot going on, it's supposed to help you with that. If you turn that on, you can see it's gonna prompt you more light required. Uh, it'll give you the information you need, but we're not in any action sort of setting right now. So we'll turn it off and we'll just set up our video here. So to take your video, whenever you're ready, you just tap, take your video, things are happening. Stop when you're done. You get your preview at the bottom left. It'll begin playing automatically and you can edit the video, turn the sound on. Again, all the same features in the photo editor that work with the photo you should be able to use here, plus an actual editor to edit the video. Again, if you wanna learn more about that, there is a video in the description that'll show you how to use the editor. So now that we've gone through video, let's move over one more and this is going to bring us to cinematic video. And this is going to give you a depth of field very much like the portrait mode photos, but now you're able to do that in your video. So for example, you can see we have tapping to focus just like we did normally. You can see that when I tap there, I can use the three times zoom as well. If you have a standard iPhone 14, your cinematic mode will not have that extra zoom. You'll be limited to the one zoom. So let's just use that for this example here. And we're gonna tap to focus in on our subject. You can see it's all nice and blurred. If we move around, it'll continue to hold that blur on everything in the video. And it's gonna give that really cool effect, especially as you work around what you're filming. So you'll play around with that, but that's basically how it works. And if you pull up, you have again, flash, exposure, and then the control of how blurry the background or foreground is going to be while you're taking that video. Moving over one more, we have slow-mo, and this is a slow motion camera built into the iPhones. And it's really cool because it slows down the footage and gives you a really cool effect. For this example, we're gonna take this little duck and we're just gonna throw him and you'll see the effect in slow motion. So we'll start the camera, we'll throw it, and we'll stop it, and this is the effect we get.
really cool slow motion effect in the video. Now what's also great about the slow motion is that you can choose to shoot at HD at 240 or HD at 120. 240 will be slowest. Keep in mind standard iPhone 14 users, you won't have the three time zoom, you'll be at the 0.5 and one time zoom as usual. So that is the slow motion. Now time lapse is almost like the reverse of the slow motion. So basically it's going to speed up the footage. Maybe you took a 30 minute video and it'll speed it up and turn it into something like maybe 30 seconds to a minute. So you can see how on screen it looks, how it sped up that sort of footage. And if you've ever seen movies where day turns to night really quickly, that's what this time lapse does for you. Now the way it works is simple too. You just tap and you can see this little thing goes around the stop button and it's just gonna keep going and going and going until you stop it. Once you stop it, it'll create that time-lapse video there and when you watch it, it'll be very fast. Again, you have your zooms here, 14 users, you won't have as many zoom options. Tap to focus is there, just like we had with the other options. And in this case, the only thing you can use with the time-lapse is the exposure controls as an extra option. So moving on now, we'll go all the way to the right here, swiping left, and we're gonna look at the panoramic mode here. And what this is going to do is allow you to take a really cool wide angle shot. You can see standard here is this arrow and you're just gonna hold it and go like this, and it'll capture everything in the photo. So for example, we can see only these sort of group of ducks in my frame here. But if I go from here, and I tap the pano option, and I just drag around like this as steady as you can. Keep in mind, I've got a camera in front of me, and you wanna keep going as steady as you can, trying to gather as much as you can in that photo. Tap stop when you're done. Check out how the preview looks. Now you can see so much more in that photo than you could see before. So you can see the bed, the curtains, all kinds of stuff you can see in this photo, rather than just being able to see a couple of ducks in the photo. Now, additionally, in the panel mode or panoramic mode, you have your zooms on the iPhone 14 Pro. Again, iPhone 14, you won't have as many zooms. You can tap to focus. You can tap on this arrow to go the other way. So this way you can move right to left. And if you pull up, there are no extra options. So that's all you have with your panoramic mode. So now we've gone over all the features here in the camera app, let's go over the settings that you can set up to customize the camera app even more. So for this, we're gonna open our settings application and we're gonna scroll down to the camera section right here. Give that a quick tap and it's gonna open the settings that you can configure. The first one is formats. And you can see we have high efficiency. Now high efficiency is going to help reduce the file size, but it's going to save things in this HEIF HEVC format. So sometimes if you're going to send this to a Windows computer or a computer that can't handle this or any phone device that can't handle this effect, it takes a little bit of time to convert or they may not be able to open it at all. So it's very good if you plan to just keep it on your iPhone or a Mac. But if you want something that's more compatible, you're going to use the more compatible option, which will give you JPEG, which is a more standard photo extension that most devices can handle. Now, additionally, you're going to see here that the cinematic video 4K at 60 frames per second, 1080p at 240 frames per second, and HDR video require the high efficiency. So you're gonna lose some features by going to most compatible. So I personally just leave it on high efficiency, and I really haven't had that many issues with it. Next is Apple Pro Raw. So this is more advanced if you're into shooting more raw footage. The Pro Raw is going to give you the ability to do that. You can read how it works here, but turning it on and off is very simple. Keep in mind when you do shoot or when you turn on the Pro Raw, you can set the resolution here 48 or 12 megapixel because these new iPhone 14 Pro cameras have the new 48 megapixel camera. So for those of you who are using the standard iPhone 14, you're not going to even have that option there to choose. And you're also not gonna have Apple ProRes, which we'll talk about right now. Basically, Apple ProRes is going to give you a pro resolution for video professional post-production. So again, more advanced. If you know what it is or you understand this kind of stuff, then it's useful to you. 
But if you don't, then you're not really sure what you're doing with this. These are going to take up much more space on your phone if you have them on. So if you don't know how they work, it's best to just leave them off. And the second option is the record video. Now you can control all of these options as I showed you earlier, 4K at 24, 30, and 60, 1080 at 60, but you also have a 720p at 30 frames per second. So in theory, if you turned that on and you went back into your camera, went to your video section, you now have 720p there. You can still tap to get your HD, which is 1080p, and you can now tap to get 4K. But if you don't want to have that 720p option there at all, just turn it to the one you want, and that's going to be the standard where the video section will open to by default. So again, I usually use 1080p, 30 frames per second, and you can see how much space a minute of footage in each one of these will take up. 4K at 60 will be the most, 720p at 30 will be the least. ShowPal formats is a television video format. It's used in many countries in Europe, Africa, Asia, South America. So if that applies to you and you want to turn it on, it's there. Enhanced stabilization. Video and cinematic mode will stabilize videos by zooming in slightly. So if you don't like that effect, turn it off. Otherwise, it's there to turn on. Now the action mode will decrease the stabilization to optimize for less bright scenes. So you can tap to turn it on. HDR video is going to record up to 60 frames per second in a 10 bit high dynamic range. It includes Dolby Vision. You can turn this on or off. See if it does change how your videos look. I personally leave it on. I like the effects. I personally leave it on. Everything you're looking at now is how I traditionally leave my settings. Auto FPS, so the frame rates are automatically going to be reduced to improve low light and to optimize file size. I leave that as is. You can tap on it and change it to whatever you want. So I'll leave it at 30 so I don't use as much space on the phone whenever it does. And then you have lock camera. This means it's not going to switch between those three cameras on the iPhone. That's what it does by default, but if you don't want it to, you turn that on, it'll lock it. You won't be switching between cameras. Again, I leave that off because it does a better job with it being able to switch between those cameras. Next is slow motion. And this is just going to allow you to choose which option you want to start with when you're taking slow motion video. I leave it at 1080p at 240. And again, you can see what a minute of slow motion will take up on your phone in terms of space. Record stereo sound. I like that to have stereo sound recording. And then you have preserved settings here. Now this is cool because when you first open up your camera application, it goes to the photo section. Whenever you close it, it'll go back to that photo section every time. But if you want it to maintain your last used settings, that way when you open the camera again, it's gonna stay with the settings you already used you would then turn those on. So you can use the creative controls, exposure, night mode, portrait mode, night mode, portrait zoom, action mode, live photo, all that good stuff. So whatever you set that to, for example, the camera mode. So let's say we wanted video to be what we're always using. So videos open, we're going to go back to our settings and we're gonna make sure the camera mode always opens to video. So if we open our photo app, it's still on video. Now if I close it, if I open it again, it should open in video. So it'll open to the last used setting that you preserved in these options here. I just leave it off. I don't really care to just move around. I don't use the camera enough for all of this to matter, but you can play around with it, customize it exactly how you want it. And that way, when you open the camera app, it's exactly the way you left it last. Use volume up for burst. I'm gonna turn that on. I'll explain that in the tips and tricks section. Scan QR codes show detect text. I turn both of these on. So if you want to scan QR codes to be taken to websites, you can, and then show detected text. I'll show you how that works in, in the tips and tricks as well. It's a cool feature. The grid, I like to turn the grid on. In your photos, it looks like this. I turn the grid on like this. And now when you open your photos app, you have a sort of grid all the way across. Now I use this just to center what I'm trying to take a photo or video of, but it does have something to do with the rule of thirds. If you are into photography, you'll know what that is. Next is mirror the front camera, and this is a very, very big thing for people. They like to have that front camera mirrored. So for example, if we turn back to our Photos app and we flip to the front facing camera and I take a photo, you can see my hand here, it's over the camera on the left side. This is my left hand here. I take the photo, for whatever reason, Apple flipped it. Now it looks like 
you know, it's on the other side of the screen. So what I do is come back to our settings and we turn that feature on. Go back to our Photos app. And now if I take that picture here, you see that in the preview, it stays the way it was. Keep in mind, this only works for the front facing camera. View outside the frame. Now this is a feature that's always kind of confused me. You can see right here a little bit outside the screen. You can see that it continues so you know what's going on outside the screen. If I go back and turn that off and I go back, you can see it's just standard black. Now I always thought that you were able to use this what's behind the screen or what's there and sort of edit later and pull that information in in the editor, but you can't. So it's more or less just to help you frame your photo from what I'm understanding. If you guys know better in the comments, let me know, but that's what I'm sort of getting from that. It's there though, if you wanna turn it on and off. The photographic styles, I showed you that in the actual tutorial where you can set those standard, vibrant, warm, cool options. You can set this so that it starts the camera in that feature or that option that you like best. I leave it on standard again. Pri prioritize faster shooting. This is going to intelligently adapt the image quality when rapidly pressing the shutter button. So you can leave that on if you like, I do. Lens correction will help to correct the lens distortion on the front and ultra wide cameras. Not a bad thing to have on. Macro control. Now this brings us to the macro ability of this camera. So let's actually take a quick look at that. The macro ability means that it has a very good close up camera. You can see I can get right in there on these ducks. You can see all the dirt on its mouth and it does flip between cameras to do that. If I don't want that to happen and I want the control, I turn this feature on. Now in the camera app, I can actually turn off that macro control and you can see it blurs the effect there. I turn it on, the macro camera is now activated again. So keep that in mind if you want more control over that macro ability on your phone. So those are the settings that you have to play with here. Now let's get into some iPhone 14 Pro Max camera tips and tricks that you can use to take better photos. All right, so for this, let's open our camera app once again here, and we're gonna start with photos. So I showed you everything you could do with photos, but you can actually take a quick take video by holding the shutter button and pulling it to the right. This is going to take a video, and you'll see it'll continue to take the video until you hit the stop button. Additionally, you can keep your hand on that and then just swipe it back left to stop the video, and those videos will be recorded right here and available to you in your preview. Additionally, if you pull left, you'll get burst photos, which will allow you to take a whole bunch of photos super quick. See that? 21 photos in less than a second. And if you tap on the preview, you can see burst. 21 photos were taken right there. Now, there was a setting that we did enable here in the settings section, which actually said to turn on the use volume for burst. So that means that we can actually use our volume rocker on our phone right here these two buttons up here to take a burst photo. So the volume up rocker, there you go. It's taking those burst photos. Now the volume down rocker, if you press on that, is going to actually take a video. So you can see right there, right from the photo section, I can take a video using the volume down rocker. So those are just some quick ways you can access some other features. Additionally, when you take photos and videos, you can shoot in this portrait mode or landscape mode like this. So try to choose which option you're using based on where you're planning to use this footage. So if you're gonna upload a video to TikTok, obviously vertical, but if you're gonna upload to YouTube, then you wanna be in this sort of horizontal mode or landscape mode as it's called. Now, if you are finding that you get grainy photos, the best thing to do is to always add light and don't have the light flashing into the camera, have it flashing on the subject, so against them that way. Now, additionally, these iPhones have a night mode. I'll show you on the front camera here. You can see it pops up right there. If you tap on it, you can turn night mode on and off, but it's also available in these extra options. It'll allow you to sort of get as much light as possible in your photo. So try to play around with those night mode features. It does go away depending on the setting. Like there's a lot of brightness on the rear facing camera, so it's able to see it. 
So just keep that in mind as well. The next iPhone tip involves the detected text feature. So if you have a piece of paper or anything, in this case, I'm just gonna use the iPhone, another iPhone here. You can see what happens right there. So I'm gonna turn that off, the macro option. You can see it's sort of surrounding the text right there. You'll also see an icon appear at the bottom right. If I tap on that icon, it's going to pull that text up just like that. It does look a little bit blurry, but it doesn't matter. And I can actually select all that text, copy it. I can then open up, let's say a note, and then just paste that right in. And instantly, that photo has become readable, editable, and usable text on your iPhone. Now this is great, especially if you're driving by something or you need to gather some information really quick. So just make sure you have that on in the settings of your camera app. It was the one right here, show detected text. The last tip here, if we open up the camera app is the pano once again. As I showed you, you can turn a photo like this and make it look really cool. But you can actually do something even cooler with this. Imagine you're in a downtown or something and you wanna grab a skyscraper. What you could actually do is hold it from the bottom so start your panel and then go upwards like this. Pretty unique. And then you just tap on the photo and now you've actually created a panel photo going vertically. I haven't really seen a lot of people do that, but it did come to me almost through this video while we were filming and I think it looks pretty cool. So give those a try. So those are some tips and tricks you can use with the iPhone 14 camera and the iPhone 14 Pro camera as well. Now, if you guys have any questions, feel free to ask in the comments. I'm happy to help you out. If this video was helpful, let me know by hitting that like button, subscribing to the channel, and click the bell notification box to be notified when I post new videos. There's tons of iPhone 14 tips, tricks, and tutorial videos coming up as well. The full playlist to all of those videos is available in the description. You can click on that, start learning right away. Thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next one.